Tonight from Orlando, Florida, the San Antonio Gunslingers come from the Lone Star State to take on the Orlando Renegades of the Sunshine State. For the game, and he said, everything's settled now, we're ready to play some football, and I hope he's right. Well, we have the toss of the coin upcoming. Bill Parkinson is wearing number 20 in the zebra shirt down there. And we have the flip by the sailor. And we'll see who has won the toss. San Antonio, huh? And they're going to receive. So the Orlando Renegades will be booting the ball off. Lee Corso, when I talked to him Friday by phone, I was out west coast in Oakland to do a football game. He told me, well, we're not going to have a practice Sunday. I'm going to go down and visit my mom. So I mentioned that on, on the, the game Saturday. And then Lee's mom was watching the football game and heard it. And Lee didn't show up yesterday for Mom's Day. She called Lee here in Orlando. He said, Mom, I'm sorry. I called an extra practice, and I'm not going to make it. But Lee did take out his mother-in-law, so maybe that makes up. One for out of two, I guess. Is, <laughs> I loved it, though. She said, but the man on television, Fred Manfra, said that you were coming down to see me for Mother's Day. So Lee chewed us out. He yes. said, you got us all in trouble. So I won't do that again. I promise, Lee. All right. A belated happy Mother's Day to Lee Corso's mom. So we, we're, we're even now, according to the coach. Well, Jeff Brockhaus will be booting, and there's Mike Omer back for the first time in quite a while for the San Antonio Gunslingers. Marcus Bonner had been doing the return duties. However, Coach Bates not happy with the way he's been working the past couple of games. So Brockhaus boots it. Omer will go one yard deep. He's coming out. At the 16-yard line, he's stopped by Bernard West and the San Antonio Gunslingers, led by this former Bruins star, Rick Neuheisel, will have the football. So Neuheisel, who set all kinds of records at UCLA and had just a fantastic college career, topped off by a great Rose Bowl MVP. He has an offense to work with here that is uh, ever-changing in many ways. Especially in the offensive line, Fred. So the Gunslingers, who have lost four straight and sit at three and eight on the season, will have the football first. Straight up is Don Roberts, the 5'10", 195-pounder from San Diego State, stopped by Lupe Sanchez for the Orlando Renegades. Setting up defensively for the Renegades, the left defensive end is Kevin Kellen. Ed McElhaney is at left tackle. Joe Urban at right tackle. Scott Hutchinson is the right end. Linebackers are Kelvin Atkins, Bernard West, and Ron Freeman. The corners, Jeff George, Albert Gray. Lupe Sanchez is the strong safety. The free safety is Victor Jackson. Following the three-yard gain by Roberts, the ball resting at the 18-yard line, just underway here in Orlando. Roberts again with a carry. He snakes it up to about the 24-yard line. Ron Freeman, the left linebacker from Pittsburgh State, making the stop of Don Roberts, part-time starter last season for the Gunslingers. If you've been watching the Gunslingers offense uh, over the year, Don Roberts has been the third down back. He'd come in, great pass receiver, and we talked to Jim Bates, the head coach, and he said, he's been giving me such an effort that I've been giving him a start the last couple of weeks, and he's been running the ball well. Third down, first of the football game, and there's a mental mistake. It looked like Rick Neuheisel pulled out a little early, either that or the center forgot what the snap was going to be. Either way, Fred, it was a middle error. Third and four is a lot better situation for the offense than third and nine, and that's what Neuheisel's facing, especially with Roberts in there. He's a great back out of the backfield on third down and four. On nine, you're stretching it a bit. Got to go to the receivers then. So the ball is brought back to the 18-yard line, and, and as Mike five, mentioned, four, third down and nine for the Gunslingers of San Antonio. Neuheisel has yet to throw this evening. Obvious situation to do that now. Over the middle, incomplete. The pass intended over the middle for Don Roberts, the young man pointed out by Mike Hafner as being the third down back. Lupe Sanchez, the strong safety, defending on the play. So fourth down, that means Nick Mickemeyer, who does double duty kicking, field goal and putting, will boot the ball away. Standing Victor Jackson deep 
for the Orlando Renegades. That was interesting. UCLA defensive back defending UCLA quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> Micamire, who was born in Bologna, Italy, the son of a famous European soccer star, awaits the snap. Of course, Micamire's brother, Steve, played in the NFL for several teams. Nice spiral. Jackson at the 50-yard line, and that is it. Peter Rayford making the tackle for the San Antonio Gunslingers. So 13 minutes to play in this first quarter, no score. The Renegades and they start out in the shotgun. Reggie Collier, of course, is the quarterback. Reggie going to throw right away, fires downfield, the pass complete into the territory of the San Antonio Gunslingers. The catch made by Jeff Smith. The defense for the San Antonio Gunslingers. We have Greg Fields at left defensive end, and hey, we're going to hustle up right here. So new wrinkle for the Orlando Renegades. Shotgun in the hurry-up offense right away. Collier fires the ball downfield in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Jackie Flowers. For the Gunslingers, now we have the opportunity to give you that defense. We'll have Greg Fields at left end. The defensive tackle is Ivan Lesnick. The nose tackle, Ben Smith. The right end is Jeff Chafin. Linebackers, Reggie Oliver and Putt Choate. We have the strong safety, Clyde Johnson, and here we go again. Hurry up offense. Quarterback fires downfield, complete to Joey Walters. So short-handed Joey Walters makes the reception, and Jeff Lighting made the tackle for San Antonio, but a first down, and again we go hurry up. Fred, you know the reason they do this in the National Football League is so they can't substitute the nickel back. Unfortunately, San Antonio always plays the nickel back, so you're not getting any edge, but maybe psychological. Let's see if Collier can hit again. Fires the bullet, intercepted. The pass picked off by San Antonio to the 25, up to the 30, flag down to the 35, to the 40. Jim Bob Morris, the nickel back, plucked it out of the air, and it's San Antonio's football, but flags are down all over the field. Speaking of the nickel back, hello. Got it picked off right off the top. Fourth Denver. interception of the season for Jim Bob. Personal foul, clipping, doing the run back on the return team. Let's watch this and let's see where the clip occurred. First of all, Collier in that hurry up offense gets a misread here. And again, he's throwing into the nickel defense all the time. San Antonio always plays five defensive backs. And Jim Bob Morris, their leading interceptor, and there you saw the clip. It was very obvious. Got him right in the back. But Jim Bob Morris makes a nice run out of it, but it's all going to come back and they're going to start just outside the 10 yard line. 11.42 to play in the first quarter. The ball resting at that 13 of San Antonio. So Rick Neuheisel will operate once again. You know, Fred, after a turnover, you like to throw the big bomb, but not when you're down in the 12-yard line. <laughs> Checking off is Neuheisel. George Works carries the football. He's been impressive the last couple of weeks. In two weeks, he's carried the ball 32 times for 136 yards. Last week against Denver, six carries for 58 yards. One of the dilemmas for head coach Jim Bates is Works is the great runner, but not the great pass receiver out of the backfield. Roberts has been an outstanding pass receiver, and because they've had so much problems with their running game, they like to throw it. So you'll see probably Works in there on the first and second down, Roberts in on third, and they'll change them up quite often. Six yard gain by Works, who played his college football at Northern Michigan. Ball at the 19 yard line. First back through with the carry is Scott Stamper. Ed McElhaney made the tackle for the Orlando Renegades. Stamper close to the first down yardage is, uh, it depends on where the official will mark the football. And I think we're going to have a measurement as the official wants the chains brought in. Scott Stamper in the offseason is a football coach and assistant at his alma mater Fort Lewis College and he runs like a coach he never gives up he got that 110 percent all the time he's an outstanding young man came from Denver down yes. to San Antonio uh, they had a few of those guys do that Joe Salippo who will play tonight in the offensive line Pachote was the star linebacker and they got obviously in that trade for Galliano they did make the first down no score in the football game. 10-28 to play. We're in Orlando, Florida on a warm but pleasant evening here in Central Florida. Good night for football. Jerry Gordon will split wide to the top of your screen. Played for Eddie Robinson to Jerry Gordon at Grambling. 
First and ten for the Gunslingers. Again, Neuheisel overlooking that defense, finding something. Rick fires it. The pass complete to Scott Stamper. Stamper, little gain. In fact, he lost a couple of yards. His linebacker, Kelvin Atkins, was right there to nail Scott Stamper. One of the things you want a linebacker to do is to read not what the quarterback's doing, but what the receivers are doing. And Atkins did an outstanding job on Stamper. He didn't bite with the deep pass. Neuheisel looked downfield. Atkins didn't bite. He's standing right there when you throw the quick screen outside to Stamper. Loss of three. So Rick Neuheisel, who said he didn't want his mom to see his long hair because uh, she'll tell him to get a haircut as you see it flow from the back of his helmet. Wants to put it up. Pass complete. Jerry Gordon makes the reception. He's at the 30-yard line, shy of the first down by three. Ron Freeman, the linebacker from Orlando, making the tackle. Rick Neuheisel has uh, found his favorite receiver over the last four or five games, Jerry Gordon. And I'll tell you what, quarterbacks love receivers that make tough catches because that makes the quarterback look good. Here's a guy, that Frank Lockett, who got traded from Portland and... Uh, Jimmy uh, Jimmy Warren said I got two guys outside that can bump and run with anybody and uh, <laughs> Lockett found out there to three that was Albert Gray there doing a little bit of holding possibly Neuheiser fires the ball first down for the San Antonio Gunslingers Roberts with the reception Kelvin Atkins on the tackle but Roberts brings it up to the 42 yard line Fred you could have closed your eyes and not known who he was throwing to and if you knew it was San Antonio it's Don Roberts out of the backfield New Heisel's looking for him all the way, never made a move. He knew that he could beat a linebacker one on one. Roberts has done this all year. There's a flag down, flag down and it's going to come back. Jeez, this is two penalties. Yes. That is that have hurt San Antonio. Fred, you know what happens in this situation? Your offense has been struggling all year and all of a sudden you get a little drive going and then there goes the flag and you know all of a sudden you start saying here we go again. So let's see how it affects New as he goes in the shotgun. Third and 13, and I didn't get a signal on what happened on that. We're not apparently hooked up with the official tonight to find out what his pearls of wisdom will be. Shotgun for New Heisel on the third and long. So plenty of running room along the near sideline, but he's hit from behind, eludes the tackle, fires downfield to Roberts. Roberts has the first down at the 36-yard line. A good scramble by Neuheisel, who is not a scrambler. We see another flag down at the 20 once again, and a nice reception by Roberts, who came back to get the ball. And was it me? Was it? There we go. 54 on the offense, 10 yards, and a loss of down. Pete Spiros, who is a starter tonight, making his first start of the season at right guard due to injuries to Arlen Thompson and Carl Roberts, the culprit that time, fourth down. Check that. It'll still be third down, and they bring it back to the 10-yard nope. line. Lost no, it'll it be down. fourth. Right, Lost right. it I'm down uh, when you have an illegal man downfield. And was it me that said New Heisel couldn't scramble? That's right. <laughs> well, he's not quite Reggie Collier, but that was a nice move. Meyer will kick out of his own end zone. You see his first punt was not uh, the most well-traveled punt. And he's got a little bit of wind in his face. Quartering wind. High snap, but Nickelmeyer gets it. Ball will hit at the 45, take a gunslinger bounce, and be downed at the 49-yard line of Orlando by Charles Armstead. Seven minutes, 30 seconds to play in the first. Start the ball game. We'll stay in that shotgun formation. They had the hurry up offense before Reggie was picked off by Jim Bob Morris. Oh, you're going downtown. But touchdown. The catch made a good one by Jerry Parrish. His first touchdown of the season. Charles Armstead beaten. There has never been any doubt about the rifle no. that Mr. Reggie Collier possesses, and we see it there. And there are no moves on this pattern other than just flat out speed. And what he wanted Parrish to do was outrun his arm, Fred, and he certainly did it. Made a fine catch, good concentration. Charles Armstead was right there with him, but a great catch. And watch Collier. All right. Got it. And Jeff Brockhaus, who has not missed a PAT try this year, has it toward the uprights. 
22 out of 22 on the season, giving the Orlando Renegades a 7 to nothing lead over San Antonio with 7-10 to play in the first. See the showdown live Friday. Well, the Orlando Renegades will not have very much rest. As you see, they'll be playing the Baltimore Stars here Friday night at 8 p.m. and on ESPN. Four days off. Ouch. That's Ulmer deep. Brockhouse boots it high. Ulmer back into the end zone. Second kickoff by Brockhouse into the end zone. Second return by Ulmer, and he stopped at the 13-yard line. Bernard West, who made the opening tackle on the kickoff, makes the tackle on Ulmer this time again. So the Renegades get on the scoreboard very quickly. You see two zero seconds for Collier to hook up to Parrish. You know what's really hurt San Antonio, their field position, they started at the 12, they started at the 18, and now they're going to start down at the 14-yard uh, line where Orlando has started at the 50 and just a little bit past the 50. And San Antonio can't afford to make mistakes like they have in their own end. Jerry Gordon, top of your screen, split out of your picture is Frank Lockett, a dangerous wide receiver for San Antonio. First to 10. Here comes Works. Got a block, and then he is really nailed. The ball rolls loose, but I think they're going to whistle it dead. No, they give it to the Renegades. Albert Gray coming up with a football for the Orlando Renegades. So we take a look, Fred, and see if they should show, throw the red flag. I think he fumbled it. I think this is a good call. New Heisel, inside blitz, he reads it, picks up the screen, works, makes the right cut. Now watch, I don't know if the end zone will show it or not, but I don't believe he's down before that ball slips out. Now you can't see it from the backside. No. They're going to ask for the red flag, though. And Bob Bauer is the man representing the United States Football League tonight. The flag is flown by... Coach Jim Bates and the San Antonio Gunslingers, so the referee bit tonight. Reggie gives it off and charging forward. Getting very okay. Yard, it's that time as the ball pops out. Greg Fields making the stop. Curtis Bledsoe, who has gained a thousand yards in this league with the Washington Federal franchise, carried the football. And Bledsoe is the type of a ball player who doesn't possess great speed, but he really plays the football game well. Collier back in the shotgun on the second down as well. Reggie fires. Picked off. Making the diving interception. Vic Miner, his seventh of the season. Miner was in the right spot with springs in his feet. Went in front of the intended receiver to get the pass. Second interception of the night against Reggie Collier. A great interception by Miner who didn't get a start. Did not get a start tonight. Now he's back in there for Larry James in free safety. Collier sees the read early, but I've got a feeling the veteran Vic, Victor Miner knows what he's doing. A great interception, a good move. He right, has tight end open. Right in front of Jeff Smith. Five minutes and 40 seconds to play in the first quarter. Well, Rick Neuheisel has hit three of four passes tonight for 16 yards, however. Orlando leading on a 51-yard touchdown strike from Collier to Parrish. 7 to nothing to score. First and 10 for San Antonio. From their own 20. Set the eye here. Pitch to the right side. It's Works. He gets outside. Works bangs off an intended tackler. Gets the first down as he crosses the 30-yard line. Lupe Sanchez finally there. Jeff George made the initial hit. Didn't phase Works as he kept gone. I'll tell you, the guy who sprung him, though, was the, the high school coach. Watch number 30, Scott Stamper. Take on the linebacker, boom, goodbye. And you give a guy like Works the outside. If you clear it for him, and then a tremendous second effort, and Works gets the first down. But a great block by Stamper, number 30, on the linebacker. 4.45 to play first quarter. Again, the eye formation behind Neuheisel on the first down. Checking off New Heisel. Straight up, charging, and you hear that as Scott Stamper just grunted as he carried that football straight ahead. The guy you want to run away from in the Orlando Renegade defense is number 56, Ron Freeman. Because if you don't run away from him, this is what happens. He gets his nose right square on Stamper's, and he didn't go anywhere after that. Freeman, their leading tackler. 
Well, Scott gained three. Scott Stamper did. Second and seven for the Slingers at their own 33-yard line. They've been plagued by costly penalties in this first quarter. Pressure on New Heisel, but he fires downfield. A good catch by Frank Lockett. First down at the 49-yard line of San Antonio. Lockett may have been interfered with before he had the opportunity to catch the ball, but he still made the reception, and he has the first down at the 49. Ron Freeman on the tackle. Frank Lockett traded from Portland two weeks ago to upgrade the receivers for Rick Neuheisel. Rick said he was having trouble picking up the offenses, but I'll tell you, we saw him down on the field, Fred, and he was interfered with. He was right on top of him before. It's a moot point because he caught it. But Frank Lockett looks like one of those studly receivers that you want in your passing game. Lockett played his college football for the Huskers of Nebraska. They don't have little guys at Nebraska at any position. After they get him out of that weight room, That's certainly it. not. New Heisel to the air again on the first down. Plenty of time for Rick. Now he's got a scramble, tackle for a yard loss. Catching him from behind, Kevin Kellen, the left defensive end. The big number 94, 6'6", 265 is Kevin Kellen. He showed some quickness there, too. You're chasing down a, a small back compared to the size of Kellen at 6'6", 264. He's chasing a 190-pound quarterback catching him from behind. There's a guy who has a Bachelor of Science degree in sociology who works as a carpenter in the offseason. All football players are not dumb. <laughs> $12 an hour, why not? Nah, no kidding. Well, they're marking a two-yard gain just into Orlando territory with 2.15 to play in the first quarter. Scott Stamper again with a carry down to the 46. Ron Freeman, a name we've called often tonight, on the tackle for the Orlando Renegades. The Renegades winners of just two games this season. They put them back-to-back. -back. They beat Memphis. And Pepper Rogers was afraid that night when he came down here. I broadcast that game. And then the next week, they went to Arizona and made life unpleasant for Frank Cush. And it's been going downhill ever since for Arizona. Third down and four. On previous third down plays, San Antonio's found a way to botch it up with a penalty. New Heisel sidearms it. Nice catch, but no first down. Scott Stamper made the reception, but he's going to be shy by about four yards. Kelvin Atkins right on top. I think Rick picked the wrong side that time. He had Roberts out of the other side of the backfield. It was wide open and could have gotten first down yardage, but he got a lot of pressure from the outside by both Kellen and Hutchinson, and he had to get rid of it quickly in the costume. So Nick Mickemeyer. Will punt once again. Victor Jackson, who had a 71-yard punt return against Portland and almost won a ball game for Orlando in the Pacific Northwest. Time ran out as he was running and got out of bounds. Bickemeyer going to the sideline, but it doesn't make it, but it takes a good San Antonio roll. And it's going to die at about the five-yard line. So the Orlando Renegades will be operating deep in their own territory. 36 seconds to play in the first quarter. Orlando leading San Antonio 7 to nothing. Orlando leading in this football game. Curtis Bledsoe, extra effort, gets him two yards. Jeff Lighting a start tonight. Former All-America at Texas making the tackle on Curtis Bledsoe. You know, he had knee problems coming out, Jeff Lighting from Texas. Now it's shoulder problems. <laughs> that poor guy can't stay healthy, but he's a fine young linebacker. Tonight, we'll be seeing a new face. And there it is, the end of the first quarter. The score, Orlando leading San Antonio here in Florida, seven. Is it hand? <laughs> the USFL, where football is still a game. Now, part of the fun here in Orlando, watching the cheerleaders along the sideline. How about Just that new face? entering the uh, second quarter here and there. Number 26, Richard Crump, played for New Orleans uh, until a couple of fellows by the name of Buford Jordan and Marcus Dupree came along. Carrying the football for the Renegades up to about the nine-yard line, Curtis Bledsoe once again. 
Paul Hanna, the two year pro for Purdue, stopping him for the San Antonio Gunslingers. That was number 30, Leon Perry, a fellow who has a wide girth around the middle. He's about 15 pounds overweight, and you won't see him in every play tonight, or else by the third quarter, he'll be down to a 120 pound week. It's amazing what the offense has done when they had great field position. Now that they have bad field position, Orlando's struggling a little. And Reggie Collier, who has completed three of six passes for 66 yards, going to be wrapped up and pulled down from behind by Paul Hanna. Hanna got him from behind. Reggie, despite the speed, could not escape. 6'4", 250-pound Hanna. When you're inside your own 20-yard line, the premium is to get rid of the ball quickly. And if you're going to scramble, you better make sure you're not going to get caught from behind. And 65, Hanna got the blind side of Collier. Greg Cater will be kicking with his back directly to the restraining line in the end zone. You see, he's got a pretty good average in the United States Football League. Back is Mike Omer, number 23 for San Antonio. Here comes the rush, but he gets it away. He towers it. Beautiful high spiral. Fair catch called for by Omer, made at the 47-yard line. 13-59 to play in the second quarter here in Orlando. The Renegades lead San Antonio 7. That's a 4 of 6 to the air tonight for 41 yards. Scott Stamper cannot get outside as he is tackled by Victor Jackson, a three-year pro from Bowie State. That's in Maryland. Victor, of course, a transfer from the Washington Federal franchise. And Jimmy Warren, former defensive back for the Oakland Raiders in their days when they were in Oakland, <laughs> is now coaching all these youngsters. And he says, Michael, he says, I got a lot of guys with average talent, but uh, they're real hard workers, and they bump and run well and play the run well. And Victor Jackson proved it there. Three yard gain that time by Stamper. Second and seven from the 43 yard line of Orlando for San Antonio. The Heisman will put it up. Downfield. It's intercepted by Victor Jackson. Jackson to the 20, to the 25, and down at the 28 yard line. Victor Jackson's fourth interception of the season, tackled by Ralph Williams. So Victor Jackson comes up big. And the Orlando Renegades will have the football once again. They have the lead here. A 7 to nothing count. And we'll watch Mr. Jackson pluck it out of the air again. Let me tell you what, free safeties love this. You leave me in zone back there and you're going to throw a post into my area. Don't you dare because I'll pick it up. And again, congratulations to Jimmy Warren. He's done an outstanding job with these young defensive backs. You saw Jackson make the great play on the run. Now he picks off a pass. 12.46 to play in the first half here in Central Florida and Orlando. The homestanding Renegades leading 7 to nothing over San Antonio. Six passes, 66 yards, two interceptions, but a 51-yard touchdown bomb. He's got the football for Orlando. Curtis Bledsoe off the right side to the 33-yard line. Rich D'Amico, a Penn State player with under Joe Paterno up there in Nittany Lion country, making the stop for San Antonio. They manufacture linebackers oh. out of Penn State. There's Curtis, who went to San Diego State, a good receiver, good runner. I suppose everybody's heard this story, but it's worth retelling Jim Kelly the fine quarterback at Houston yes. was going to go to Penn State until they said by the way you're going to be a linebacker he said no I'm not <laughs> I wonder how many stories in college football we have like that. oh yeah on the second and six Collier lofts it out complete Jackie Flowers making the reception and the first down for the Orlando Renegades Jackie Flowers who in the offseason drives a big 18 wheeler made the reception and the first down about six weeks ago Reggie Collier hurt his knee. He'd been in the two wins. He'd been outstanding running the football since the knee has been injured. He's been almost exclusively a drop back thrower and he's getting better at it. Flowers ran a nice out pattern. He hit him perfect. 11 54 to play in the first half here in Orlando. The Renegades with the football and a seven to nothing lead. Curtis Bledsoe again. Bledsoe was hit initially by Putschote, slowed him down, and then the rest of the gunslingers coming down to make the help on Putschote. He's a hard-nosed football player. Oh, yes, he is, and the leader of that bounty hunter defense for San Antonio, and I'll tell you what, Putschote loves north-south runners. The guy's coming right at him, he jumped right in their face, and he did right there. He was involved in a trade with the Denver Gold for a fellow who's doing a pretty nice job directing that attack there, Bob Galliano. 
Galliano for Choate, and they'd like to have Choate back. They were hurting a little bit of linebacker, and uh, Choate's a special, special kind of player. An SMU pony. He learned to tackle backs. They had plenty of them at SMU yeah, yes. on the other side. On the second and seven, Curtis Bledsoe, running that north and south direction, gets the first down at the 45-yard line of the Gunslingers. Victor Miner making the hit for San Antonio. This is what's great about Bledsoe. He doesn't have the great speed, so he learns how to be an inside runner. And you give him a hole, and look at that quickness. He's got that little extra burst, and if you get by putt choke, then you're running over 165-pound defensive backs, and it's a lot easier. Well, I called the first down, but they marked it just the Orlando side of the 45-yard line. We'll see if they stretch it out. You got good eyes, Fred, because I think it's a first down. My optometrist would be proud. <laughs> first down for Orlando. Yeah, I called one last week, and so I don't say anything anymore. <laughs> I was wrong to think three straight times. That's seven to nothing score, the result of a 51-yard Reggie Collier strike. And there's the man who can throw it and run it. Collier on the first and ten, looking to the air, throws downfield, incomplete. The pass intended for Bob Nazolik is tight end. And he couldn't hang on. Nazolik is another former Denver Gold player, but when Mouse Davis brought that run and shoot there, tight ends were not needed, and Nazolik found a new home. Non-existent. That's like, not like Bob Nazolik either. He has great hands. It's one of his uh, attributes, and that right on the button. He should have caught that one. A little bit better than 10 minutes to go in the first half. Second and 10. Complete, wide open and headed down to the end zone. Jackie Flowers, touchdown. Peter Rayford beaten badly. Jackie Flowers romp home. Well, the fans here tonight came with their fingers crossed because for the first time in the history of the Orlando franchise, the Renegades were favored to win a football game. And I'll tell you what, Peter Rayford, I'll, I'll give him a little vote of confidence. That was an all-out blitz. And they picked up the blitz, and that left one-on-one -on -one coverage, and uh, that was adios, Jackie Flowers in the end zone before they knew. There wasn't much he could do, Fred. It was an all-out blitz by the Bounty Hunter defense. He was left one-on-one -on -one in the middle of the field with no help, and Rayford, Tried to make the at least the interception to knock it down. He couldn't. Let's see if Brockhouse can remain perfect on the season on the one-point try. He got it right down the middle, and it's a 14 to nothing Orlando Renegade lead. Ten minutes and 18 seconds to play in the first half here at Orlando Stadium. But wait a minute, we have some down. We have a flag down on the field, and apparently Outside so. on the defense. Penalty's declined. He says on the kickoff. Test on the kickoff. The point is good. So it stays 14 to nothing Orlando with 10 18 to play. And here's a bad sign, possibly, for the Orlando Renegades. Reggie Collier holding that left hand. Here in the driver's seat, I can tell you real quickly if I'm driving a true road car or something else. This Mazda 626 lives up to the name. Nice, willing overhead cam engine, smooth shifting five speed, even adjustable suspension. This car really likes to run. This is one refined road car. It's also fun to drive. And at 8845, it also lives up to the value you expect from Mazda. Mazda 626. If you lived in a perfect world, you'd cook on something very like the Weber One Touch. It would give you perfect barbecue flavor because it would circulate heat like a convection oven to keep meats juicy. It would last for years and it would clean itself with just a touch. Of course, you don't live in a perfect world, but you can cook on the perfect barbecue, the Weber One Touch. From the biggest name in your backyard, Weber. Tomorrow, the toughest athletes around are on ESPN. First, Johnny Davis defends his PKA World Welterweight title against Ricky Haynes. Then, follow the bouncing ball in our Australian Rules Football Game of the Week. It's the world's wildest game, and you'll see why. Get your kicks with ESPN tomorrow. 
Now well, should be an interesting viewing evening there. An interesting night so far tonight for this young man Reggie Collier got a couple of long touchdown passes when he we left he was holding his left hand but you see there everything's a OK for Reggie and for the Renegades they lead 14 to nothing Brockhouse thanks to that five yard penalty tacked on after the uh, PAT try will have the five yard advantage he boots it high to the 20 to the 25 and out of bounds for the San Antonio gunslingers Mike Hagan. And it'll be first and ten as the Renegades will be on defense. The San Antonio Gunslingers have the football. And you see another fairly quick drive. The first drive for a touchdown took them 21 seconds. And this one took just a little bit more than two minutes. When you're throwing 45 and 51 yard touchdown passes, you could score quick. 10.08 to play in the half. The offense for the San Antonio Gunslingers has been uh, very much non-existent this evening. Bad field position except one time and New has got to open it up. There's only one way to get back in this game. That's for quick just like Orlando. George Works picks up a big chunk of real estate that time about nine yards on the carry Victor Jackson there for the stop and we've called Jackson's number quite often tonight on tackles and of course he's had the interception. New Heisel yet to throw on first down, probably because of the field position, Fred. He's been backed up against his own goalpost. But if you want to open up the offense, you throw on first down, run the draw or slip screen on second down, and hope you don't have to get into that third and long situation where you have to throw. Well, here's second and just one. First down, works again. You know, everybody talks about the importance of third down, but every coach you talk to says, that first down. In a second down and short situation, you've got the sweat on the defense, and you'll see that the San Antonio right side of their line has the edge because the defense doesn't know run or pass when it's second and short. First and ten for the gunslingers from their own 39-yard line. Mike Hagan, the up back in the eye now for the gunslingers. Complete to Don Roberts, and Roberts is knifed down by Bernard West, the linebacker. West, good coverage that time, really came and broke up the play, and it could have been a pretty good gain along that left side. If you're the defensive coach for Orlando, you've been watching the films because 43 out of the back. And a bunch of beef along that front line. Some big people. Three backs in the backfield for the San Antonio Gunslingers. The deep back gets the football and the first down, and Scott Stamper has it into Orlando territory at the 49-yard line. James Scott, the 6'5", 250-pound first-year pro from Clemson, made the stop for Orlando, but not before a first down. The three-back set puts the sweat on the linebackers. Who's the lead blocker? They can't tell, and you've got your choice, one or the other. Scott Stamper picks the right guy. And Freeman is the one who got blown away by the wrong lead blocker. Watch, he'll pick the lead blocker that he thinks the running play's coming at. And he got stuff. And that's the reason for the first down. Works. Lupe Sanchez bulldogging him down there at the 45 yard line. Lupe Sanchez, another Bruin out of UCLA. I'm sitting next to a Bruin from we're UCLA. All, we're all over the place, man. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get away from us, they're everywhere. Loopy's a fine, fine safety, too. Another one of those Rose Bowl guys. Of course, we say that because Rick Neuheisel had such a fine career at Westwood and Southern California. Can't get into the UCLA Law School. USC accepted him. Yeah. But Isn't that amazing? Works again with a the football. They're stringing him out. Works does a good job. He may have the first down. Look for a minute like Works was going to be mousetrapped back there in the backfield. Ron Freeman finally running him out. Works is a nice running back. He's got that just enough speed to turn the corner. And it was all his speed that made that play. The blocking broke down. They took the lead guard out quickly, and he just used his speed to get outside and get the first down. 542 to play in the half. Orlando 14. San Antonio with the football, but they have nothing on the scoreboard. Works has seven carries tonight for 50 yards. Creditable evening. Go, 
First and ten. That's Gordon in motion. First back is Mike Hagan, a Grizzly from Montana, brings it inside the 40 to the 37-yard line. Graham and Hutchinson along the defensive line combined for the Orlando Renegades. Neuheisel's done a good job here. The quarterback knows after you put the pressure on your defense, a couple of turnovers, that you've got to have a drive to keep them off the field, and it's super important that they get points here, even if it's a field goal, Fred. Ricky Kaufman split wide to the top of your screen. Hand up goes to works again. And he lives up to his last name. He works for that yardage as he comes to the 35-yard line. Ron Freeman there on the stop. It looked like works was going to be stopped, but then he just kept going. That's a good description, Fred, that he was working hard. One of the things they did, it's second down and nine. Defensive linemen are thinking pass. They're into their pass rush mode, and he got away with it because he bumped into the pass rushers and still got the extra effort. Good job by works. He'll have a third and let's call it six at the 35 of Orlando. Four and a half minutes to play in this first half. And we're going to have a timeout call. Orlando, it's their first timeout. So the Renegades want to talk things over here. Four minutes and 30 seconds to play here in Orlando in the first half. The Renegades leading San Antonio 14. Well, welcome back to Orlando Stadium. USFL Monday Night Football. Fred Manfro along with Mike Hafner here in Central Florida. Rick Neuheisel, number seven, the leader of the offense for the Gunslingers of San Antonio. He's thrown for just 41 yards tonight. He has a good completion ratio, as he normally does in his career. Six of nine is Rick Neuheisel. In college, he had a phenomenal percentage completion. Well over 60%. That's awesome. In this situation, the defense has the edge. It's third and six. They know you're throwing. Sometimes a draw player work, but they've got to have something work with Neuheisel here. Neuheisel will throw. Rick releases the ball, complete. Roberts with it and a first down. Good job by Neuheisel to escape the pressure. Roberts, all by himself, picks up the first down. Out of bounds at the 14-yard line of Orlando. Guess who on third down, Fred? <laughs> 43 Roberts, we've got him isolated. And this is an outstanding job. He hides behind the pass rush. Slips out of the backfield now. You saw what a great play Neuheisel made just to get the ball off. But Roberts was wide open. He hid behind the defensive lineman and then slipped out. That makes the extra effort and gets a big gain. And boy, San Antonio's offense needed that play. Well, they have it at the 14-yard line now of Orlando. Their deepest penetration of the night. They trail 14 to nothing. George works to the 10. Oh, down to the one. He fumbles the football, rolling in the end zone. Gray comes up with it. I think he was down, Fred. They're going to rule him down. I believe they're going to rule him down. I think so as well. Lupe Sanchez made the hit initially. Let's watch. You be the judge at home. We'll have Mike judge it here. The way I read the rule, Fred, if you are tackled by a defender and you fall to the ground, the ground can't cause a fumble. Now, if nobody touches you and you fall down, the ball slips out, then it can. But he's tackled right there. He is down with the knees. The ground caused the fumble. Therefore, he is down right where he hit. And that's an outstanding call by the official. The side judge had it perfect. He was tackled, and the ground can't cause a fumble. Lee Corso now calling Do you referee want Bill flag? Parkinson over. We're going to have the second red flag of the night. San Antonio called one earlier. They lost on a possession, of course. Now let's watch it again. And I think, Mike, you hit it right on the head. It's the interpretation of the rule. If you're, nobody touches you and you hit the ground and you fumble, fine. But he's tackled right there Luby by Luis Sanchez. Sanchez. His knees hit, then his chest hits, then his elbow hits, the ball comes out. And the way I read the rule, you can't cause a fumble because of the ground. Well, Bob Bauer, who represents the USFL here tonight, the man who's watching the replay and will make the determination, getting overtime pay, <laughs> two in the first half. There's no replay available. The play stands as is. There will be no charge timeout. I don't understand that. Lee doesn't either. We showed it. Uh, you saw it at home. Lee says, what happened? 
We had the replay. Yes. Still, Lee, after the game, I'll tell you, because I can sit right here and do Mr. Bauer's job, Lupe Sanchez makes the tackle, and the ground cannot cause a fumble if you've been tackled. Knees are down. See it? Right there, he's dead. First now the ball comes out. First and goal to go for San Antonio. Stamper nowhere. Jeff George, the left corner among many blue shirts for Orlando to make the stop. On the goal line, Fred, when you're inside the three-yard line and you've got an even matchup with the defensive-offensive lines, you want to throw on first down, run on second down. If you've got the great back, if you've got an O.J. Simpson and Eric Dickerson, then you can run on first down. But if it's an even matchup and you don't have the quick backs, you go up top first to try to catch the defense off guard, and then on second down, they don't know what you're going to do. San Antonio. They trail now 14 to 6. Scott Stamper gets the first six pointer of the night for the San Antonio gunslingers. And Scott, as he runs off, looks like he's limping, but you have to remember last year he missed most of the season by a, a leg injury. And it's a 14 to 6 football game. Mickemeyer will kick out of the hold of Neuheisel. Mickemeyer has missed one PAT try of 11 this season. Good job by Neuheisel to get that up, but it's no good. And the bad snap back and hold problem caused the lack of the point that time by Mickemeyer. Scott Stamper putting the ball into the end zone on a good sweep. And this surprises the defense. Stamper hasn't got the great outside speed. They were expecting the inside run again. He goes outside and does a workmanlike job to get inside. And they had a pretty good lead blocker in there, too. Number 35, the mailman, Larry Canada. And there's the reason Scott Stamper got outside. Outstanding block. Picture perfect. That's the kind when you're a player you like the coach to run over and over. Yeah, not the, the one where you get beat. That's right. Run that back, coach. I look good on that play. So Mickemeyer will boot the ball at San Antonio's scoring drive. A nice drive. 13 plays, 74 yards, consuming six minutes and 48 seconds. And Mickemeyer, everybody will look in the paper and say, well, the bum missed another extra point. Yeah, Wasn't right. his fault. That's right. That snap, New Eyes did a heck of a job to get it down. Watch number 85, Jerry Parrish. He's taken the ball twice on kickoffs for touchdowns this year. One time, a 95-yard run. Mickemeyer kicks it high and deep. Parrish two yards deep into the end zone. Parrish with speed. Still on his feet. Squirms his way to the 25-yard line, finally tackled by Jeff Lydon. And there it is, the scoring drive. We have 319 to play in this first half, and that ate up a big chunk of this second quarter. Typical New Heisel drive at quarterback. He's a short, contained type passer. Isn't going to get the big bomb on you. Likes to use his running backs. And 648, uh, they should have done that first. Kept the ball away from the Orlando offense. Well, the Orlando offense, led by Reggie Collier, has thrown two long touchdown passes tonight for their 14 points. They have the football at their own 23, first and 10. Collier, who's got that rifle, throws it up, up for grabs, intercepted. The pass picked off by Jim Bob. Jim Bob, Jim? no, no, no it's Williams. Williams. Leon Williams, the third-year pro from Louisville. His first interception of the season. That time, Reggie Collier just threw that ball up. Not very much power on it. Could have drawn rain. And a lot of time for Williams to get under it. Let's watch. Leon Parrish. It's Parrish. Jerry Parrish again, who has a touchdown pass. But again, on the play action pass, Collier ought to bring that down, run the football, and not throw it up for grabs. Anything you want to do with two minutes and 54 seconds to go, is not give San Antonio the ball back again so that they can make a drive, either get a field goal or a touchdown. First and 10 for San Antonio from their own 47, trailing 14 to 6. He highs all the works with a block at the 50. Works still on his feet, out of bounds along the near sideline at the 47. Luffy Sanchez on his back 
as Works came to the near sideline. Works getting that extra step, that quick step inside. And I'll tell you what, the offensive line for San Antonio is getting the edge. Ralph Williams, Pete Sparrows in there, Rich Garza, Rod Walters, Lee Spivey. They've got the edge on the defensive line now in the second quarter where they didn't have it in the first. Just 48 seconds to go to the warning. San Antonio trailing 14 to 6, but they have the football. George Works trying to get outside. He won't do it this time. Scott Hutchinson fought off the block and then made the tackle. Scott Hutchinson, six year pro from Florida, had tries in the National Football League with several teams. 6'4, 255 pounds. The ball back now in San Antonio territory at the 49 yard line, third and nine for the Slingers with 2.19 to play in the half. And I know what George Work said to Neuheisel in the huddle when he came back. He said, once too often, Rick. Once too often. Third down. Oh, my goodness. Look, look at the that. time of possession. Shotgun on the third and nine. Wide open and broken up at the last minute. Jerry Gordon looked wide open. It was underthrown, allowing Jeff George time to break it up. I'll tell you what. There was a lot of heat on Mr. Neuheisel, though. He got the blitz, the all-out blitz. Watch Neuheisel here. Uh, he knows he's got Gordon open. And look at the blitz. My goodness. He was lucky to get it off, and he's lucky to still be alive. The blitz by Jeff George, the left cornerback. So we now have the two-minute warning. Actually, 156 to play here in the first half in Orlando. The Renegades and their fans happy. They're leading the San Antonio Gunslinger. A choke may be the leading rusher out of punt formation in the history of the USFL or all of football. Victor Meyer gets it away. Coming up with a football, Victor Jackson. And Victor is down at the 25 yard line. It gave putt number 56. One less, 55 for putt choke. Tackle made by Leon Williams. 147 to play here in the half in Orlando. Renegades 14, San Antonio 6. Now look at Herschel. That guy continues to bowl him over. And he's way up there. He's going to push Eric Dickerson's pro football record in the season. Now Flutie yesterday did not have what you'd call a dramatic game or an exciting game, but he won it for him. All that counts is the W in the win column. First and 10 for Orlando. Collier pumps, but he's going to go flag down. Reggie to the 33, sliding down there, flags back at the 15-yard line. Reggie Collier, who several games ago against Jacksonville, he's getting up holding his right hand this time. Before it was his left. He may have jammed it when he went down. Collier against Jacksonville, and I did that ball game. 171 yards, not through the air, running. Four touchdowns. However, Mike Rozier for Jacksonville that night also scored four <laughs> touchdowns, and Orlando lost in overtime. I know who got the holding call. It was Ed Fulton because he chased the line judge all the way down the field <laughs> saying it wasn't me. Well, that run went for naught, and we'll see if uh, Reggie Collier comes out wringing his hand again. He was holding his right hand when he got up from his scramble. 138 to play in the half. First and 20. Bledsoe with the football. Heard some good hitting down there on Curtis Bledsoe. Ben Smith, the nose tackle from Missouri, made the hit. And we're going to have a timeout call again by San Antonio. So the Slingers call that timeout, trying to protect the clock. They trail here 14 to 6. They'd like to get that football back and have the opportunity before half to go in. You know, the one problem. They had to give away one of those timeouts because of the red flag. And uh, oh, here's a, here's a back who can do it all, huh? I'll tell you, whatever league you talk about, this guy could play for me. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> There's another guy that could play for me, whether you're talking about USFL, NFL, NBA, ABA, anything. <laughs> Are you watching Joe up there in Penn State? He's a pretty good quarterback, son. <laughs> Another pretty fair receiver. Boy, I'll tell you, they missed him. He got hurt in the first game of the season at Birmingham, and uh, nine weeks he's been out. Look what he's done. And upcoming shortly, like next Monday night, Jacksonville will take their show 
And that run and shoot uh, of Houston will try to go against the Bulls of Jacksonville. ESPN Monday night fans, we got them four out of the next six weeks. You can have lots of fun watching that offense. Reggie Collier again in the shotgun. Second and 13 for Orlando. Over the middle, pass complete to Bledsoe. Bledsoe may have the first down, depends on the mark. Bledsoe squirting over the 35 to about the 36. Jeff Lighting made the hit on Bledsoe, and it is going to be a first down for the Orlando Renegade. Now, wait a minute. The official wants to measure here, but we'll watch it again, and you'll see Curtis Bledsoe all by his lonesome. Crossing pattern against the nickel situation. You've got your linebackers on a blitz. And when you get the back out there, there isn't anybody to stop him. He's in between the linebackers and the defensive backs, and all Collier has to do is wait for him to clear. I can't believe myself tonight. Two Another first two. down. Two for two, Fred. I like your optometrist. He's a good man. One minute, 20 wait seconds to, hear to go the half. To the veteran, Joey Walters. Walters with at least a nine-yard gain as Putschok made the tackle, and Walters is a team leader. And they're going to go with that hurry up again. They started the half with the hurry up, and they're going to end it with a hurry up offense. One minute exactly to play in this first half here in Orlando. Over the middle, Collier gets it. Curtis Bledsoe with the first down. Bledsoe at the 37-yard line of San Antonio. Jeff Lighting stopping Curtis Bledsoe. The clock stops with 50 seconds to go in the half as the chains are moved after the first down. A reminder in the last two minutes, every first down, the clock stops. Here they go again. Over the middle again, Curtis Bledsoe. Good run by Bledsoe after the catch. He picked up an extra four yards inside the 30 to the 27-yard line. Ben Smith there, along with a number of the white jerseys, should be enough for another first down for the Orlando Renegades. Just 10 seconds eaten up by that play. Clock stops again as the chains are moved. 30 seconds to go in the half. Clock running now. Collier hits Joey Walters. Walters puts on a move. Cuts back as a blocker. Walters inside the five to the three. Thirty seconds to play in the half. Joey Walters up limping, but what a move he puts on. Here's the veteran receiver who knows how to take advantage of the two-minute drill. Now they're playing to keep him in front. Look at Walters on the outside. Now watch the move. He knows that they're thinking, hey, he's going to run out of bounds, and he cuts back inside, picks up another 15 yards. The smart veteran knows when to take advantage of young defensive backs who think you're going to run out of bounds. First and goal to go now, and a timeout called. Catches everything. 30 seconds to play in the half. First and goal to go. Fake the blitz so Collier can drop in. Touchdown. Reggie Collier scoring his 10th running touchdown of the season. Six now. Lee Corso's Orlando Renegades leading the football game, and they have struck quickly when they get their points. I've been wondering for a couple weeks when this one was going to come again. Reggie Collier, 10 rushing TDs, but I don't think he scored one in the last five weeks. At least one where he's made that kind of move outside. Rockhouse, again, to exercise his right leg. Mr. Automatic for Orlando is true once again. 21-6 to six now. The Renegades lead a flag down again. 12 men on the defense. That's one of the good ways to try to block a kick with 12 men. Penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. Uh, Reggie Collier, who has not been very mobile in the last several games because of a bad knee, had just enough to get in this day. Plus, he'd really thrown the ball well on the run, and now they didn't expect him to run the ball, Fred. They've seen him the last couple of weeks where the knee has been bad, and we talked to him before the game, and he said, hey, the knee is as healthy as it's been all season. And that shows the answer right there. Putchote was playing pass all the way. He thought it was coming over the middle. 
he was too late to catch Reggie in the corner of the end zone. And of course, Reggie Collier, when he played his college ball at Southern Mississippi, first man in NCAA history to run for a thousand yards in the same season that he passed for a thousand yards. And you saw the reasons why in that drive. Now look at that, 123 for the touchdown. Hurry up, offense. Seven plays. Rockhouse will be kicking to Mike Omer. He Omer went to Doan College, and that's a trivia question. Where is Doan College? Got Nebraska. <laughs> My wife will shoot me. She's from Hershey, <laughs> Nebraska. <laughs> Low line drive. Omer will watch it go into the end zone, and he's going to down it. With 24 seconds to go in the half, the San Antonio Gunslingers will have the football first and 10 from their own 20 yard line. And we'll see if Rick Neuheisel will air it out here and try to get on the board before the half. They've got 24 seconds to go. I've got a feeling he's going to be looking at six defensive backs, Fred. And the sixth defensive back in the Orlando defense, pretty interesting story. Kelvin McGowan, number 48, is. Uh, Stepson of West, the defensive back coach. On the first and ten, New Heisel the throw. Good defensive coverage. New Heisel looking to scramble. Now he throws it downfield. Broken up by Mike Guess, the four-year pro, former Buckeye of Ohio State. Mike Guess is the nickelback, and again they had six in there. And we'll be able to see all those defensive backs that New Heisel's got to look at. You'll see the end of the pass. Nice job by Mike Guess. You play a little zone while the out guys, outside guys play man when you've got six in there and you make it tough. There's the secondary. See the six DBs? Neuheisel's going, wait a minute, I've only got three receivers out there. Where am I going to get somebody open? And no one was. 15 seconds to play in the half. San Antonio with the football trailing 21 to 6. Second and 10, they're all 20. Stamper, five yard gain as Joe Irvin. There's a name. A pro football graybeard, Joe Irvin. And that should be the half. As the Orlando Renegades excite their fans here, leading at the half, 21 to 6 over San Antonio. So it's halftime. Orlando 21, San Antonio. Jacksonville all afternoon. First quarter, Ed Luther's pass is tipped and intercepted by Fred Nordgren. Turnovers were the difference in this game. So it was a big difference, by all means, the interceptions, the fumbles, all of it. It makes a big difference, believe me, and it also helps us on defense, too. The first turnover resulted in this, Gary Anderson's five-yard touchdown run. Anderson is just 43 yards short of 1,000 for the season, 7 nothing Bandit. Second quarter, fourth and one, Bandit ball. Reeves pitches to Anderson. He throws eight yards to Marvin Harvey. The touchdown, it's 14-3 Tampa. Mike Rozier is closing in on 1,000 yards. He goes nine yards for the score, 14-10, Bandits at halftime. Third quarter, another costly turnover. Ed Luther fumbles a snap from center. Tampa recovers the Jacksonville 18. Two plays later, John Reeves will find Larry Brodsky for the touchdown, and the Bandits lead the Eastern Conference as they pick up a victory 21-10 over Jacksonville. Meanwhile, the Breakers and the Stallions Saturday night on ESPN. First half, a defensive battle. Birmingham on fourth down and one. Joel Coles is stopped by Marcus Merrick. Best effort on offense, the pitch to Buford Jordan. Jordan, who gets outside for the good yardage. Portland could not go any farther, though, and they had to punt, even though Jordan did a fine job on the ground. Second quarter, Stout goes up top, but he overthrows Ken Toller, who would have had a touchdown here. Look how wide open he is. And Stout, very disappointed with himself. No score at halftime. Breakers found a way to turn up. Potential great play into a bad one. Several opportunities down the punt inside the five. The Breakers end up kicking the ball into the end zone for a touchback. And Dick Corey, you know what his reaction is going to be. Throw the headset down. Nothing's going right for Portland. Late third quarter, Cliff Stout to Ken Toller. Finds him this time, wide open in the end zone. 15 yards in the TD, 7-0 Stallions. The final, 14-0. Birmingham beats Portland. Pass picked off by Kerry Justin. Another good effort by Herschel Walker on this Sunday for the sixth straight week. Herschel went over the 100-yard mark. He leads the USFL in rushing. Fourth quarter, game's all tied at three. Doug Flutie hadn't had a great afternoon. He hadn't been throwing the ball that well, but he runs it in from the five. The Generals keep pace with Birmingham for second place with a 10-3 victory over the defending USFL champs. 
you get two losses in a row, it's tough. And it was a big momentum builder now for us going in towards the end of the season. You know, Baltimore's a legitimate team. They're tough. And it's a big win for us anytime. And yet, it's coming off of a loss. It's great to be back on a winning track. You get a good attitude about practice this week, and you come back out strong. So, New Jersey, a 10-3 win over Baltimore at the Meadowland. He rolls left, gets a block, takes it in four-yard touchdown, 7-0 boats. Houston moving second and goal. Jim Kelly will get nailed here. He fumbles, Calvin Clark recovers for Memphis, and the home crown loves it at the Liberty Bowl. More problems for Houston in the second quarter. Kelly back to pass, he gets intercepted by Will Coakley at the Gambler's 15-yard line. That led to a TD, 14-6, Memphis at halftime. Fourth quarter, 17-9, and Kelly is rushed, but he gets it away. Ricky Sanders at the receiving end, 43 yards in the TD, 17-15, showboats with a two-point lead. The big play in the game, gamblers go for the two-point conversion. Richard Johnson's got it, can't hold on to it. Houston challenged the decision. The play stood 17-15 right there. Houston, though, had a chance to win it. Ten seconds left. The gamblers tried to get better field goal position with no timeouts. Todd Fowler stopped short of the marker. The clock winds down, and the final big win for Memphis, 17-15 over Houston. Meanwhile, out west, the Express and the Invaders, Oakland Alameda County Coliseum, opening drive. John Williams takes the pitch from Hebert, finds the hole, gets outside, 26 yards in the TD, 7-0 Invaders. L.A. was able to drive into Oakland territory, but a great pass rush led by number 54, Ed Smith, kept the Express out of the end zone. Second quarter, Bobby Hebert is going to look long. Anthony Carter, he's looking long, too, because he got behind Ed Scott. And AC trots into the end zone, 14-3 Invader, and Carter explains that touchdown catch. It was a blessing. They was rolled up, and uh, Bobby just tried to hit me with a quick fade, and, uh, and the ball happened to go a little longer than I expected to, and I just had to try to turn on the speed and uh, try to go get it. Williams again, this time seven yards up the middle for the score. Invaders lead it 21-6, and they go on to win it. 27-6, the final score at Oakland. And another United States Football League game, and what a shootout at Tempe, Arizona. The Denver Gold, high-scoring Denver Gold. They're right in the thick of things. In the West, 42-28 victory over Arizona. Other teams, including the Gunslingers. First quarter, Renegades have the ball midfield. Reggie Collier, 50 yards to Jerry Parrish, and it's 7-0 Orlando. Second quarter, Renegades on the move again, and Reggie Collier is going to drift back, and he's going to get rid of it before the blitz hits him. He finds wide receiver Jackie Flowers. Great catch, good concentration, all alone, 45 yards for the touchdown, and the Gades with a 14-0 lead. San Antonio came back. George Works fought his way to the one. He fumbled it. Now watch this. Replay says it's gunslinger football, and Scott Stamper would score on a two-yard run point after was no good. 14-6 Orlando. Renegades add another touchdown run by Collier. You can have the football all you want as long as you don't get in the end. You can fly. There's a flag down. Harris fumbles the ball out of bounds at the 27-yard line, but there was a flag dropped back at the 15-yard line. Well, a legal block on the penalty against Orlando. Now we have an opportunity to, to really digest this and dissect it. First of all, excellent field position for Orlando. The only negative there are the three interceptions, but Collier made up for him with two TD passes and run one in. And the 21 to six score with Orlando leading over San Antonio. Thanks to the penalty, the ball is down at the 10 yard line where it'll be first and 10 for Reggie Collier and the Orlando Renegades. This is the way San Antonio started the first half. Poor field position. We'll see how Orlando reacts to it. At number 30 in the lineup is Leon Perry. Perry out in front to block for Curtis Bledsoe. Bledsoe still on his feet, driving hard as Ivan Lesnick wraps him up around his back and pulls down Curtis Bledsoe. San Antonio tonight a lot on their minds the football players uh, you've been reading about it the, the fact that several checks have bounced in the last week another check and Mike you've probably gone through situations where you've had a lot on your mind trying to prepare for a football game now you need hundred percent when you're playing against great athletes and if ninety nine percent of it is somewhere else you're in trouble on the second down Reggie lost it out there wide open making the catch no he didn't Jackie Flowers 
the line. May have been out of bounds right in front of Lee Corso. Now watch Lee. He, okay, he said, okay, okay. Now we must apologize. We'll tell you about what happened on the call earlier on the replay. Now let's watch this one. And you, I think Jackie was out of bounds. What he did was, I believe he was out of bounds first. There. He there. Was. Now he's back in when the ball's caught. You can't go out of bounds. As soon as you do, you're an ineligible receiver, and that's a perfect call by the side judge. In the first half, there was a, a call to look see again on a play called by Orlando on a run by San Antonio and a fumble into the end zone. Well, Bob Bauer at that time could not see the replay because his monitor was not working, and thus we had the no call by the official. But he'd have made the right call. Third and six. Higher going long. Pass incomplete. Interference at the 42 yard line. Now, Joey Walters was out there. And we oh, should yeah. have a good look at it. For the fans at home, now he knocks it down with his right hand, but watch where the left hand is. 44 Armstead, going to make a great play with the right hand because he gets up and knocks it away. But watch where the other hand is, wrapped around his tummy, and that ain't legal, folks. Perfect call again. Uh, yeah. We got a good shot of it there. You won't be able to see the hand wrap around his stomach, but he makes a great play. That is legal with the right hand up there to knock it away. But it's where the left hand is, wrapped around his stomach, and the referee had a perfect position on it and made the right call. 15 yards marched off against San Antonio to the 29-yard line of the Orlando Renegades. First down for the Gators. They have that lead. Curtis Bledsoe again. Rich D'Amico. The initial hit for the San Antonio Gunslingers. They call their defense the Bounty Hunters. The sixth ranked defense in the United States Football League. Number eight against the run, number six against the pass. And that's outstanding for a team that hasn't won as many as they have. <laughs> and they're playing against the offense that's ranked number 13 in the United States Football League. Number 12 on the run on the Renegades, last in the league on the pass. But a maturing Reggie Collier, and we've seen some maturity tonight, especially out of the pocket pass. 12 46 to play in the third quarter here in Orlando. The Renegades with the football. Curtis Bledsoe, the Renegade running back, charging ahead. Greg Fields, the six year pro out of Grambling, making the hit for San Antonio. Bledsoe getting up rather slowly, but what? Curtis has carried the ball quite often oh, yeah. tonight. What train hit me that time? <laughs> All of a sudden, he stopped cold. But he's one of those tough backs, and he's learned to run inside. He knows how to take the blow. Six-yard gain by Bledsoe. Third and four from the Orlando 34. Here's where you roll Collier out. Put pressure on the defense. Off the hands of Curtis Bledsoe. Reggie just looking around. And what does the quarterback say to the man who dropped the pass like that? You don't have to say anything. Just, Just look him look. right square in the eyes. And he, <laughs> you get the message. So it's a fourth down. Greg Cater, who was obtained by the Orlando Renegades from the, the Memphis Showboats. Mike Homer standing there at the 24-yard line of San Antonio. So Cater should rocket the ball from about the 24. Nice spiraling kick. Homer at the 28. Tackled immediately. Going back to make the tackle. Lupe Sanchez. And what a defensive ball player he is. 11.50 to play. That's either pretty. <laughs> First and 10 for San Antonio. The ball sitting at their own 28. Works. Good job by the defense of the Orlando Renegades. Ron Freeman making the hit for the Renegades. He was obtained from Jacksonville by Orlando. We'll Ron, watch him here. Ron Freeman, the leading tackler, and San Antonio hasn't mixed it up on offense. They're running most of the time on first down, and Freeman's got the key now, and if they continue to do that, they're going to be eating 56. Well, you see, the Slingers have had the football quite often and quite long, but their scoreboard result is uh, negative. They have a 21 to 6 deficit that they're playing. Early, they got bad field position. Late, they got good field position, couldn't capitalize. New Heisel on the second and eight. All by himself. 
himself making the reception into the territory of the Orlando Renegades. Ron Freeman making the stop. The catch made. And hopping off the field is uh, Ke uh, Kevin Williams. The reason for this completion here, Rick Neuheisel gets time. And if you stretch the defense with your deep players, then the middle's going to be open in between the linebackers and the safeties. Kevin Williams right there and with his great speed almost gets outside and breaks away. But it was the key to that completion was the protection by the offensive line. So it's first down for San Antonio at the 46 of Orlando. Works. The 45 yard line, one yard gain, the left corner, Jeff George hanging tight. Kevin Williams. You see being helped along the far side of the field. Williams, as Mike mentioned, is a speed burner out of Southern Cal, and he looks like he is in pain. I think he twisted the ankle, and they're going to take the tape off, see if they can relieve the pressure, then they'll retape it, and then he'll test it to see if he can, if he can play or not. Newhouse will miss him because he got the speed. I think he holds a touchdown record at the he does. Trojan country. There. Yeah, he does. I think they've got Frank Lockett to replace him, and he's a good receiver. We also have Jerry Gordon in the lineup. Stamper on the draw, and Scott brings it inside the 40 to the 39. Kelvin Atkins there for Orlando. Orlando leading 21 to 6, 9:07 to play in the third quarter. I like second down when you run the running play, but the running play to run. Is the drop play and Stamper finds the hole because you know that Orlando is playing the pass rush. When Stamper gets up close to first down yard, it's about two yards to go. Third and short. Works has the first down and more. Works to the 20 yard line. George Works stopped by Victor Jackson. But George Works, who played his college football at Northern Michigan and averaged over four yards a carry in college, picking up the big first down for San Antonio at the 19-yard line of Orlando. In short yardage, you try to plug every hole. If you leave one open, the next thing George Works sees is a safety. And he got big yardage. Why? First and Freeman. Ten. Freeman blocked well by the big center. First and ten. San Antonio works trying to get that yardage inside to about the 17 yard line and that's that's all he's going to get there is Lupe Sanchez and Bernard West combined on the tackle. I said the works it was Don Roberts. Don Roberts with the carry. Roberts who uh, as you see pretty good average tonight. Good receiver out of the backfield for Rick Neuheisel. Under seven uh, under Eight minutes to play in this third quarter. Second and seven. The ball at the 17-yard line of Orlando. So far, Neuheisel has done exactly what he had to do to get back in this football game. They had to have a drive right here, Fred. That's Lockett at the bottom of your screen. Roberts again inside the 10 to the eight-yard line. And again, the former Illini, Kelvin Atkins, making the hit for the Orlando Renegades with 7.09 to play in the third. Roberts has been the third down pass receiver out of the backfield, but we talked to Jim Bates before the game and he said, hey, the guy's been giving me such an effort that I'm going to give him the football and let him run it a little bit today. And so far, Jim Bates was right. And it paid off that time to make it goal to go for San Antonio at that nine yard line. Gordon splitting out of your picture at the bottom of the screen. And now there's some confusion along the uh, San Antonio offensive line. And Neuheisel, Let's see if that's a key here, Mike. Nope. Now be a pitch to Works. Works still driving to that goal line. Down to the three. Victor Jackson stops Works. Still a pretty good idea to wipe the ball off, though, Fred. When you're going to pitch it, you don't want it sliding through his hands, especially on this crucial drive. And watch Hagen's lead block. Again, oh, he missed it. He missed it. But Lupe Sanchez went out to take him on and <laughs> took himself out of the play. So even though you don't get the great block, a lot of times the screen block will do it. Well, we get word from the bench that Kevin Williams is bothered by a bad right ankle. He's the wide receiver that limped off the field earlier for San Antonio. You see it. Just three yards to go to that end zone on a second down. The three back offense once again. Charging forward. Extra effort gets him in. Scott Stamper. Jeff George. 
trying to hit him and stop him, but Stamper just went lunging forward and got in. Again, the two lead blocks with the three backs, but Orlando had made an adjustment. Obviously, they're out there to take him on. This is just second, third, and fourth effort by the high school football coach, Scott Stamper. Excellent job. Here again, you'll see it. The defensive line has will slide to the outside. This is the way Stamper scored the last time with the three backs. This time they're there to take him. It's his second touchdown, and uh, they're going for two, and I would too in this situation. Now they, they had the uh, extra point try hit the upright, and now they're going to try to even things up at least to points wise for themselves. Try to get 14 here. New Heisel into the end zone. Caught! Two points, Frank Lockett making the reception. So it's now a 21 to 14 lead, and we'll watch Lockett pull it in again, and Jim Bates is happy now that his team is back in this football game. I, I want Rick Neuheisel to tell me he was throwing it to Lockett. It certainly looked like he was going for Roberts, the, the back. There's the throw, and you'll see Roberts. It goes right over the top of his head, and hello, Frank Lockett, standing right in the right place. Now that I see the play, I'm sure Neuheisel was going to him. Now here's the key. Neuheisel needs time. Whoa. <laughs> and Hank Hagen took Mr. Sanchez and said, listen, UCLA boy, you ain't getting anywhere near my quarterback. 549 to go in the third. Orlando 21, San Antonio 14. And the Gunslingers are back in this football game. We'll kick deep to Jerry Parrish. Parrish will come up to take it at the five. Parrish to the 25, and he is stopped by Joe Silipo and Reggie Madden. 5.39 to play in the third. Orlando 21, San Antonio. They're two of the league's top offensive teams with passing games that are right on the money. You can't see it anywhere else. The Showboats and Bandits, live Saturday on ESPN. Well, two of the teams playing the best football in the United States Football League right now are going to go at it on Saturday. Tampa Bay, the best record in the league in Memphis, is red hot. Pepper Rogers is happy. Oh, I'd like to have his defense, Fred. <laughs> oh. Again, Bledsoe with a carry, and Bledsoe twisting, turning up to the 31-yard line. Greg Fields with the tackle. And, you know, you look at the rushing comparisons for the teams, Mike, and uh, Curtis Bledsoe is about the whole rushing offense for Orlando we saw at on the halftime statistics that San Antonio had the football all the time and yet they were down well the reason is 150 yards seven yards 154 yards rushing for San Antonio only 41 for Orlando which means they keep the ball more and as you saw there the bulk of that yardage by Curtis Bledsoe second and five Bledsoe again Clyde Johnson a strong safety hitting him for the San Antonio Gunslingers. Johnson, a rookie, Jayhawk from Kansas. One of the things when you get a big lead, Fred, you don't want to go conservative. And if you go conservative, then your team's emotion tends to ebb and all momentum switches over to the other team. And right now, it's all on San Antonio's side of the field. If I remember correctly, the Orlando Renegades went to Mile High Stadium in Denver playing the gold and had a 17-0 halftime lead, and they right. lost the football game. And the fans down here were all over Lee Corso saying, why did you play so conservatively in the second half? When you've got talent, when it's working, hey, keep going for it. If you're afraid to make mistakes, you'll make them. Well, there's the big margin right there. But still, Orlando leads on the scoreboard, 21 to 14. Reggie Collier cannot get out of the grasp of Clyde Johnson. 6'2", 200 pounds, Clyde Johnson. Sprinting stride for stride with Reggie Collier and tugging Reggie down. Fourth down coming up now. We'll watch Reggie try to run but not get away from Clyde. Clyde Johnson on the blitz, normally the strong safety, and he came up. Collier didn't read blitz, didn't find his out man, and Johnson makes a great play. And I'll tell you what, San Antonio is right back in this football game. And the momentum has changed to the white shirts. Greg Cater again will have to root that football in order to prevent San Antonio from having pretty advantageous field position. Another towering kick from Cater. Gormer waiting. He calls for the fair catch, makes it at the 36. A flag down. There's a flag down. 3.51 to go on the third quarter. We'll find out about that flag on return. Orlando 21. 
351 to go in this third quarter. It was 21 to 6 at the half. It's now 21 14 Orlando leading San Antonio. However San Antonio has called dominating this third quarter. The momentum has definitely changed. So Rick Neuheisel who is the impetus behind that momentum at quarterback for the gunslingers. Overlooking the defensive line long count. Hagan pops. Oh I thought it was going to pop three for a minute. Hagan may have uh, nine yards on the carry to the 35 yard line. Lupe Sanchez the tackle and for a second there it looked like Hagan might have had touchdown written on it as he broke through because Orlando has gone conservative on offense the defense for Orlando now has to take the brunt of the pressure watch Sparrows who is getting a first shot 54 gets just enough of him so Hagen can break the line of scrimmage and no linebackers there to help new Heisel fakes pass complete Lockett, Lockett to the 39-yard line, first down. Lupe Sanchez stopping Frank Lockett. Here's a stat that'll rock you back. Time of possession in the football game, nine minutes and six seconds for Orlando. They lead 21-14. San Antonio, 32 minutes and 10 seconds. Look at Frank Lockett coming across the middle. Look how long it takes before the ball gets to him. You know why? Neuheisel had all day. And when you do that, you throw in between the backs who are backing up to play defense, the linebackers who are backing up, you continue to stretch that defense, and Lockett was wide open. Nice 20-yard receiving average for Lockett tonight. George Works moves it to the 37-yard line. Ed McElhaney out of the University of Massachusetts making the stop. You know, another ball player that played at the UMass who makes a nice little living putting the ball through a hoop for the Philadelphia 76ers. That's right. He only went until his sophomore year, but he did go back and graduate. Right. Dr. J, hey, the man. And they're playing, uh, of course, Boston in that series, yeah, and that's a good series. They're always in a fight for their lives when those two hook up. Three-yard gain that time by Works. Again, George Works. Look at him go. Works going to be just shy of that first down at the 30. Bernard West with the hit for Orlando. It was second down and seven, and that's usually a passing down. But because momentum has changed and the pressure is on the blue shirts now of Orlando, Works is getting a hole. And I'll tell you what, the right side of that offensive line, Ralph Williams, Salippo, they're playing super football, and they're beating Orlando at the line of scrimmage. Third and short yardage. Works. He's going to go. Flag down, however. Flag down. Works gets the into the end zone for the touchdown, the apparent touchdown. But there's a flag thrown at the 27-yard line. And it, it is offside. Defense. Penalty is declined. Touchdown. And we are now one point away from a tie football game. Where do you see the block by Mike Hagan? Mike Hagan springs him, and it was the defensive end who jumped offside that he lead blocked to. Well, Jim Bates right now is sky high. Uh, here it is, ground level. You'll see 34 just disappear in your picture. And after he breaks the line of scrimmage, you can forget it. Works is in the end zone. Works, who in college at Northern Michigan scored 59 touchdowns in his career. Having a nice night tonight for the San Antonio Gunslingers. Boy, has the momentum switched from first half to second half? That's the biggest switch I've seen all year. Mickemeyer, who hit the upright on his previous try following a bad snap, has another snap go, and Neuheisel can't control it. That's killed him this evening on the PAT try. So it's still a one-point margin for the Orlando Renegades with under a minute to go here in the third quarter. Renegades leading by one, 21. Behind the passing of Chuck Fusina and running of Calvin Bryant are ready to make their charge toward a spot in the playoffs. Watch them take on Orlando live Friday. Well, you see we have under a minute to go in this third quarter in Orlando. Micka Meyer, who's had... Uh, not through his fault, but a tough time on the PAT tries this evening, having one hit the upright and the other one not having an opportunity to kick because of a bad snap. He'll be booting to Jerry Parrish, and Parrish, as I mentioned before, is dangerous. He's averaging nearly 24 yards a kickoff return. 
Rogers takes it to seven. Setting it up here along the near side. Can he get out? No. 23-yard line, and he's pulled down by Larry James. Well, Joe Silippo is snapping, or Silippo is snapping. Let's see what happens on these snaps. Oh, it's Rich Garza, Garza. 61. That's probably the problem. Silippo's, that, that was a horrible snap. There's, you can't blame anybody but the center. Garza has to snap because Silippo's been banged up. And that probably is the reason for all the extra point problems. And look like number 77, Scott James, is uh, really coming in like a freight train. You've never snapped this before, you say? Wait till I see what I'm going to do to you. On the first down, Collier over the middle. Curtis Bledsoe to the 28-yard line. I'll tell you, working with Marv Levy, uh, the coach of the, look at that drive there for San Antonio. Marv Levy, who I work with usually on the Thursday, Friday USFL broadcasts, of course, coached at Cal, and he told me, and I couldn't believe this, that Craig Morton was his long snapper because Craig was the only guy that could do it. Hey, I'll tell you, they're important, Fred. <laughs> okay, on the second and four. Tire, incomplete. Flowers was there, but a good defensive play as coming over to bat it away, Peter Cottontail Rayford. Ah, uh, you can't. You can't have a rainbow on an outs out outside pattern because cornerbacks sit back there and drool, say, go ahead and throw one of those rainbows over there because I can catch up and knock it down. Now shotgun on the third and four with just four seconds to play in the third quarter. Rayford had a lead. Looked like he was limping when he came back. He had pulled a muscle. Collier, time running out in the third. Pass complete. Nice catch by Jeff Smith. Smith extending himself, picking up the first down with time running out in the third quarter. So there it is, the gun ending the third quarter. 15 minutes coming up. Orlando leading San Antonio by one. Close one here, 21. Is the most important business at hand. SFL, where football is still a game. Well, being congratulated for his record-setting performance for the San Antonio Gunslingers tonight, number 33, enjoying a rest down there. George Works came into this football game, having carried the ball 32 times for 136 yards. Look what he's done tonight. And the old record was 96, so he shattered it. Well, we're going to have a thing that we have, we're told to look out for. Jerry Goldstein, a quarterback, and Reggie Collier both in the huddle. You see Collier coming out on the flank right now on the right side. So Goldstein, the NFL vet, throws downfield. He lofts it up. Collier out there. He's out of bounds. He caught it, <laughs> but he was out of bounds. Well, a little razzle-dazzle there. And the fans had their hearts in their mouth that time. But let's watch Jerry Goldstein. He's wondering what's going on there as he comes over to talk to the official. You tell me the call, you probably could play defensive end and pass the and rush the quarterback. Good speed downfield. Couldn't keep his. They both have a right to run down the field. If they bump each other, it's incidental. Well, of course, you know, there's all the talk that Reggie Collier he ever plays in the National Football League or he should be changed into a wide receiver because of his size and his speed. But Reggie's back at the QB position. Now he's going to be hit. But he did a good job of protecting the football. Knifing in, coming in very quickly for the San Antonio Gunslingers, Mr. Jim Bob Morris, who already has an interception tonight. But a good job that time by Collier because he could have coughed up the football very easily. Jim Bob Morris had the right angle, nobody blocking on him, and only a great athlete holds on to the football there. Most of the time, you'll knock it back, and it'll be a fumble. And a good job by Collier. Now, and Jim Bob has an interesting off-season job. He works as bodyguards for various celebrities. He's worked as a bodyguard for the rock singer Joan Jett. <laughs> Who? <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you got to be with it. I know, I got to be. It's too, too old for us. Second and 23 this time. Well, that one did not work, as you can see. Henry Odom tried it, and Henry got nowhere. Ed Moransky was out there, but couldn't do anything. You tell me what to call Fred on third and 23. Yeah. No play looks good. That's correct. <laughs> the fans don't like it. So that means Greg Cater will be in. 
Cater has really been drawing rain with his kicks tonight. He's been getting great hang time. Mike Gomer's had a call for fair catches more often than not. And good coverage by the Renegades, especially number 21, Lupe Sanchez. So we'll watch for it here. Another high spiral. This one doesn't turn over. Omer is going to be finally brought down at the 33-yard line. Kelvin Atkins there for the hit. 21 to 20. Combination here in the fourth quarter and get on the scoreboard. Look at those total yards. 316 for San Antonio was 223 for Orlando, 178 for San Antonio at the half. That's 138 yards of total offense for San Antonio in the third period. But Ooh. they trail by one. Again, that's all that counts by Fred Scoreboard. New highs over the first back through. Scott Stamper. David Graham, who played his college football at Morehouse, getting Scott Stamper around the neck and pulling him back. Uh, three points for takedown, I think, in wrestling. He'd have got it cold right there. Might have pinned him, too. 12.55 to play in this football game. Regulation here in uh, Orlando. Oh. Charging through there, Pete Spiros. Who's played a pretty good ball game considering his first start, but uh, he went rocketing off that time. New offensive lineman, new starting job. He forgot the snap count because he was so wanted to be so aggressive. Mental mistakes will kill you just as quick as a clipping penalty or physical error. Well, early in the football game in that first quarter, San Antonio had the football, but they were being killed on third down plays that they had made for the first down right. by penalties that negated the games. Speaking of penalties, San Antonio, most of those came in the first period. Second and 13. Got the shotgun for Neuheisel here. <laughs> Plenty of time. Neuheisel completes it. Scott Stamper trying to fight for yardage, but Ron Freeman was hanging all over him, along with Bernard West, the linebackers, getting Stamper. Stamper brought the ball to the 40-yard line. Now they only have five more to go for the first down. Good safe call by that high percentage quarterback Newheisel. He could have gone downfield, but what you don't want to do here is turn it over. And Newheisel is a bright young man. He knows that his offense can continue to move in five and six yard chunks, and he certainly doesn't want to turn over. Third and five. You're going to look for Roberts. Number 43, the man you saw move into position. Pass downfield, complete to Gordon, Jeff George, or was it incomplete? I think it was complete for the first down. <laughs> yeah, I, I, now my optometrist is going to get a bill here because uh, Gordon made the catch, first down. There were people flying all over. I thought he was going to go downfield to Roberts, but they covered it. Let's now take watch. a look. Comes flying right across his face, and you think he can't hold on, but Gordon makes a great catch and a fine spot by the side judge. Right. It's not where you end up, it's where you catch it. 11.07 to go in this fourth quarter. First down for San Antonio at the 46. George Works, the new individual game rushing record holder for San Antonio, stopped by Ron Freeman. And Mike Hagan, the fullback, came back to Rick and said, wait a minute, I ran the wrong way. You wonder why George didn't have any blocking for him. His lead blocker went off right tackle, and George ran off left tackle. San Antonio gunslingers trying to stop a four-game slide. The Orlando Renegades looking for their third win of the season. Works again with the football. Good job by the linebacker Ron Freeman to meet him head on. Lupe Sanchez also helping Ron on the tackle. A gain of just a couple. They mark it at the 49-yard line of San Antonio. It'll be another third and 
fairly long yardage for the gunslingers. Newheisel has been successful at this. He either looks for Roberts early out of the backfield or he gets Frank Lockett on the crossing pattern because he's got the time. The first key will be can they protect him to give him time to find his receiver. Watch Roberts. Number 43. Watch him. intercepted. Mike Guess had the football and dropped it. Now that was a good play by Neuheisel that time. He was pressured heavily but maintained his cool and then lofted the ball downfield and at the last minute Mike Guess cut between the ball and the receiver to force the incompletion and Guess almost had the ball picked off. It had been a great catch if he did but what he did was prevent a first down and that was the key. Good job by that young man, number seven. He should have been tackled for a loss, but he got out of it. Kick. Nick Mickemeyer will be kicking the football. Victor Jackson standing at the 15 of Orlando. Mickemeyer rockets one this time, but Jackson will call for the fair catch and make it at the 13-yard line. Nine minutes, 23 seconds to go in this ball game. Orlando by one. The air right away. The pass complete to his tight end, Bob Nazolik, his second reception of the evening. Reggie has really not looked to the tight end very much tonight. Charlie Armstead right there at the right corner for San Antonio. But I like it. They threw on first down. They only got a one-point lead, but they've been aggressive all night on offense, and if they quit doing that, you saw what happened. The gunslingers catch up. Just a one-yard gain on that quick pass to the tight end. 8.40 to play in the football game. Orlando with the football. And they don't have very much breathing room. They lead 21 to 20. Collier with two long touchdown bombs and a touchdown run tonight. He hits a strike that time. Reggie Collier drills it in to Joey Walters. First down for the Orlando Renegades, and we'll see how they got it. The pass on first down put the bounty hunter defense of San Antonio in a sweat. They gave Collier time. Joey Walters, the Wiley veteran, knows how to get in between that zone. And there he is for a big first down pass. At the 36-yard line of Orlando. And Smith's been giving him problems all night, 94. Smith and Dornberg say, not this time. And that's the reason Collier got the time to complete the pass. To the air again for Reggie Collier over the middle. And complete. Pass intended for Jackie Flowers. Jackie could not hang on. Jackie had that one in his hands. Tough catch, but you got to make those tough catches. That's it, Raymond Berry. There's another name out of the pass. You say, anything I get my fingers on, whether it be one finger or not, I should catch. Fred Bolitnikoff, that was the premier of his career. Dave Logan. You know, if you're a step slow, you got to catch the ball. Some of those guys are more than a step slow, <laughs> yeah. but they could catch the ball. Yeah, they were in my speed grade. <laughs> Second and ten. <laughs> Joey Walters that time. Now Joey does not do that very often. That's rare. Super rare. Leon Williams there close, but uh, Joey should have had that football. Looked like he maybe had his mind on running before. Let me tucking. see. Let me see if I can find an excuse. Well, he threw it on the back. Oh yes, yes. he was running for a touchdown before he caught that one. Ah, eh, even old veterans do that every once in a while. Well, here's an important play. Third down and ten now for the Renegades. We have 7:38 to go in this football game. Not good on third down and more than three. Oh, that's all they needed. Has it been recovered by San Antonio? According to yes. the big guy, Ben right. Smith, it has. And who's coming up with it? Hannah picks it up. Paul Hannah has the football. And what field position Rick Neuheisel and the Gunslingers will have when they come back with the football after this uh, timeout? Oh, here's a young, young quarterback who wants to hurry back and get the first down, and you can't do it if you haven't got the football. So that the ball will be at the 35-yard line of Orlando when we return. Over Orlando. See the showdown live Friday. Well, Friday night, the ESPN cameras will be right back here in Orlando Stadium. The Stars still with playoff hope 
They don't want it to die against the Renegades. Stars are having a surprising season in their inconsistency. This year. Maybe the move really shook them up. Well, you practice in Philadelphia, play in a suburb of Washington, you call yourself in Baltimore. Yeah. Look at this to reverse. Frank Lockett back to the line of scrimmage and a few more. The reverse really didn't gain too much. Kevin Kellen running about. Now let's watch this one here and how it develops. Well, if you haven't got the deep threat, when you get a turnover, you usually go upstairs, but not with San Antonio. He hands off to Roberts. Roberts to Lockett. And Lockett, with his great athletic ability, gets an extra five yards here that a lot of, a lot of players wouldn't have got. Make it four. Fred. Yeah, we'll call it second and six. Give right. or take a few inches. Yeah. <laughs> of course, they want to take those few inches, not give them. 7 4 to go in the football game. They want to make sure they get into Mickenmeyer's range without turning the ball over. And get a good snap. There's Works. Wow. There was an absolute brick wall. You saw Works go. I was waiting for him to sneak through, but you didn't see his helmet sneak through there. You could just pick out your tacklers. One of them, number 56, Ron Freeman. And then he had about four other men helping him out there. I think the big problem was Ralph Williams, the big offensive tackle, couldn't get out of the way, and George <laughs> ran right into him. Uh, he and Kevin Kellen were having a, what they call a stalemate. So it's third down and five. San Antonio trailing by one, 21 to 20. It's at the 30-yard line of the Orlando Renegades. Boy, they'd like to have a first down here instead of a 47-yard field goal. New Heisel going to be pressured. Good block, but Rick will not get it away. He dumps it off out of bounds. Are we going to get a flag or not? I think the nearest receiver there for him was Coach Jim Bates. I think they're going to the call grasp. it in the grass, and that'll take him out of field goal range. Getting him in the grass was Kevin Kellen. Give him a nice little hug. Now you're looking at a 58 yard field goal instead of 47. That's even worse. And of course we look at Mickemeyer's stats. He's 0 for 2 50 plus so. And we can't we can't tell whether he's going to punt or kick because he does them both. That's right. But I got a feeling he's going to punt it. I would think so. Yeah. Nick is going to uh, get the ball away from about his uh, 47 or 48 yard line should be going for a corner. You wouldn't dare fake it here. No. 559 to go in the football game. Long snap count. Pickemeyer will go to the right corner. It'll be taken at the 10-yard line. Victor Jackson trying to do a little decoy there. I think he what forgot he, to stick his hand up. up. He just stood there, caught it, stood there for a second, and then he got hit. 5.40 to go to the football game. Orlando 21. Five minutes and 30 seconds to play in this uh, football game. And Orlando would like nothing better than to maintain possession of the football, something they haven't done very much tonight. They give it to Curtis Bledsoe. Bledsoe brings it up from the 13 over the 15 to about the 17-yard line. 21 to 20 is the score. Orlando clinging to that one-point lead. Also, but, we'll give some credit, too, to the San Antonio defense. Uh, they were on the field for a long time in the first half. Then they got burned quickly. But they've come back. They haven't given up. And they played a good defensive second half against Reggie Collier and his renegades. Second and six. Pass complete to Flowers. Flowers with a first down was hit by Peter Rayford. But a first down for the Orlando Renegades at their own 25 yard line. And that clock continues rolling home for the or Renegades. They'd sure like to have a nice five minute drive here. Yes. To wrap the whole game up, keep the ball away from San Antonio. And that's something they have not done this evening. Now they scored awfully quickly in their long drives. Collier on the first down will go from the shotgun. Coming in motion is Jerry Parrish. That's Bledsoe, a five yard gain for Curtis Bledsoe. Clyde Johnson, the strong safety there. 
Bledsoe did a good job standing in bounds too, as did Flowers on the prior pass. They know that clock's running. Under four minutes to go now. The, the longest possession tonight by Orlando is a drive that took them a little bit better than three minutes. Three minutes and ten seconds, and they didn't score on that drive, but right now they'd like to kill about 346 of this football game. I think they'd take a three-minute drive here. Second and five. Let's go with the first down. Well, you know who they depend on on that running game for the Orlando Renegades, Curtis Bledsoe. Bledsoe running off the right side on Ed Fulton and Joey Joel Patton, and they open a hole for him. And I'll tell you, those kind of backs, when you're trying for the long driver, the ones you want, they always get yard three, four, and five, where most backs only get you yard one and two. Well, each team with three timeouts remaining here in the football game of course you see we're approaching that two minute warning all at the 38 yard line of Orlando first and ten throwing on the sprint out complete the flowers but a flag is down at the 45 yard line pass was complete at the 44 and a half Football man downfield number 63 on the offense it's a loss of down Oh, that Second one down. really hurts. That one really hurts. You don't want to make a mental mistake, and that's what it is. It's a mental mistake on the offensive lineman on the roll pattern. And that's odd because that's Tom Dornbrook, a veteran, a veteran who should not make mistakes like that. Watch the left side of your screen, 63, going downfield. Now, wait a minute. Well, we didn't get to see much of it, but if you're making an effort to block a player, you shouldn't call that one. Right. Well, there's Dornbrook. You can see him, He's definitely downfield. Right. But usually the line judge will give you the benefit of the doubt if you're engaged in making the block. That's a tough call against Orlando. That really hurts. 2.24 to go in the football game. Second and 20 now following the penalty. Collier to the 29 yard line and that's it. Greg Fields there to slide him down. 2.10 to go on the contest now. We're going to have the two minute warning coming here as the clock winds down with third and 19 for Orlando and there it is the two minute warning exactly two minutes to play in the football game Orlando 21 San Antonio 20 protecting that one point lead Fred Manfer along with Mike Hafner and Mike it's third and 19 for Orlando from their own 29 and they they got a long way to go for that first down here's what you do you got a young quarterback. You don't want him to make a mistake. You run a running play. If you don't make the first down, you punt the football. Don't mess around. Okay, we'll see if they, if Lee Corso and the rest of the coaching staff nope. went what you said. No, they're going to go to the air. Collier throws it long. Flowers there, incomplete, out of bounds. So it'll be a fourth down and 19. That ticked off eight seconds off the clock. Well, there is a theory, Fred, that says if you're going to if you're going to throw it, throw it deep. If it gets picked off, it's just like a punt. But I don't like taking chances like that. You can get a run back at you. Well, let's see. Mr. Cater has had a very good evening tonight. Who's that down? Looks like uh, number 24. Larry James may have a cramp. That's what, what it looks like. Yeah. It's well, humid it's enough to give him the cramp now. Warm evening. You get those exercise, those muscles massaged. Oh, well, well, that hurts. Those cramps. Oh. <laughs> Where do you get them? In the top of your thigh and in the back at the same time. You don't know which way to stretch it to stop them. Well, we said at the beginning of the ball game, we definitely did not have two Super Bowl teams here, but it could be an interesting football game, and that's what we have. 152 to play in the football game. One point difference, Orlando leading San Antonio. Pretty good lineup on Monday night there, huh? I'd like to be there for that Birmingham Houston game. Oh goodness. Jacksonville New Jersey the rematch and that last game could Oakland decide. and Houston could decide the West of course yesterday with Houston losing Charlie Sumner's Oakland Invaders took over the top spot out West. Yeah and Houston now tied for second place with Denver. So, so that's quite a battle with the top three out there. Some very good matchups coming your way on Monday night U USFL play on ESPN. Now the format of course changes this year for the USFL and here's how it'll work. Eastern and Western Conference champions the runners up in both 
and then the next four teams, no matter what conference you're in, the next four teams with the best record go into the playoffs. And that's where the scramble will come. Yeah, it's going to be wild. And if it ended today, there are the teams. Jacksonville with the worst record of the bunch at six and six. Of course, Tampa Bay with the best record. And uh, John Bassett, uh, the owner down in Tampa Bay, very happy about that because he said he is not going to go to play fall football in the USFL. He's going to start his own league. A lot of people doubt whether John will get that league off the ground. Yeah, I'll bet John's happy. Uh, first of all, he, his team has the best record in the USFL. Let's watch Larry James and the problem, how it developed for Larry. Making that extra effort in this kind of humidity, and you stretch the legs out, and I can see the cramps coming right now. Ouch! There we go. Greg Cater with a good average tonight. And he has been hanging that ball high. And we've had good coverage by the Orlando Renegades, and they must get that now. Mike Ulmer awaiting the punt at the 25-yard line of San Antonio. Just a one-point difference. Orlando leading San Antonio, 152 to play. Oh, look at this kick. Cater just rockets the football to the 22. Omer with it there to the 25. Omer is hit at the 27-yard line. Tom Wheeler, a reserve tight end on the special teams, making the stop for Lee Corso's Renegades. And now it'll be up to the Gades to keep the Slingers down this end of the field yeah. and not going up this way to our left to put points on the board. You know who has been the best offensive player in the second half for Orlando? You're looking at him right there, number 14. He has, he's been their main offensive weapon. Or the best defender, really, a punch the first defensive play, and they put him up against the wall. New highs with the shotgun, 139 to play in the football game here in Orlando. The San Antonio quarterback to throw, he's got pressure, he lobs it up, out of bounds. Looked like he was just releasing that so that he would not be dropped for the long loss. The big pressure coming in from David Graham, the defensive tackle. A lot of times the plays that aren't successful, at least in the statistics, are really successes when you have a smart quarterback. And I'll tell you, he takes an 8, 9, 10, 11 yard loss there, and he really puts his team in a hole. So that was a great play by New Heisel. Of course, if San Antonio can get the field goal, they can win the football game. Yep. They're only down by one. There are the stats for Rick. Vance here getting into the football game. Now you hear defense. Incomplete. Good defensive pressure and good defending by the backs for the Orlando Renegades. Jeff George, the left corner, making the play. The crossing pattern when you give them time is the play to throw, and Jeff George knows that. And watch George. He makes up about a yard and a half, enough to get his left hand or his right hand in there and knock it away. Here's third down already for San Antonio. We have 125 to go, and there's one of the Renegade boosters having a good time tonight on this Monday night game. Edmund often they got a win to yes. cheer for. <laughs> Could be the ball game right here on the third down. Incomplete. Jerry Gordon had the football, had the first down, may have had a touchdown, and he dropped the football. Oh, Jerry Gordon going to kick himself tonight. Again, the crossing pattern, you got to give New Heisel time. He gets it. And he's, Gordon's got two steps on his defender. There's the catch. Oh, he turned to run for the touchdown and forgot the football. Just flat dropped it, and that'll, he'll, that'll haunt him for the next couple of weeks. Fourth down and 10, and they'll go for it. Obviously with this, uh, what, 119 to go on the football game. Trailing by one, San Antonio and New Heisel with the football at their own 28-yard line. Gordon with the reception this time. First down, 48-yard line. He made up for it, Fred. I'll tell you, if he wouldn't have caught that one, he would have continued to run right out the end of the stadium. Here comes the hurry-up offense. Jim Bates, uh, they the coach call time of San out. Antonio now, call a timeout. San Antonio with two timeouts remaining. Orlando with three. They move the chains to stop the clock at 112. 
Again, the, the exact same crossing pattern. Why not come back to what was successful? He did it from the opposite side. Gordon's coming the other way this time. And as I said, Fred, if he did drop this one, you could oh. just keep running right out the end of the stadium <laughs> and never come back. There's a look at the secondary. And you can't really fall to Orlando. You don't want the bomb for the touchdown, so you'll give him the one over the middle because time's running out. But I'll tell you, they're getting closer to field goal range, and they're going to have to start inching up on those receivers and playing them tough. Of course, their field goal kicker is Nick Mickemeyer. Between the 30 and 39 yard distance, he is perfect. Seven of seven. Inside the 30, he's perfect. Three for three. Jimmy Warren's defensive back got all the pressure on him now, Fred. They're playing up. One minute, 12 seconds to play in the football game. First and 10 for San Antonio for their own 48. New Heisel lofts it out. The pass complete. Twisting, turning, making the reception. Ricky what a Kaufman call. for the first down. Clock stopped. Out of bounds. 105 to go. Jeff George beaten. Fred, you want me to tell you how tough it is to turn your body around almost 180 degrees and make the catch? Now look at look at Bates. Now wait a minute. Uh oh. Been brought back. I say it was out of bounds. Let's watch this. Ricky Kaufman, 83, and this is a fade route. You run to the outside, the quarterback lays it over your shoulder. One foot in, the other foot. Oh, goodness. Oh. I'd red flag that one. I'd red flag that because both feet were in. Let's Fred. watch it again. Here's the better angle. All right. Stragging. Right foot in. Yep. Left foot dead in. Whoa. -ey. Now Whoa. we can't see right straight down the sideline, but from this angle, he was flat in. 105 to go. Second and 10. Still at the 48 of San Antonio. Over the middle. Gordon couldn't hang on, but that time he would have had a good catch if he'd have made it. That was pretty tough. Could have made an easier throw to him because that was way up, uh, way up the ladder. And it brings up third down. I was surprised. Were they out of their red flags? They had one more in the second yes, half, did. didn't they? I'd have gone for that yeah. on the. Yeah. Oh, it was right along the sidelines there of uh, San Antonio. So Coach Bates had a better view than we did, apparently. It's nine losses. Fifth straight loss for the San Antonio Gunslingers. They are now. Uh, the problem here, Fred, is you got fourth down and 17. Why even throw this pass? I'd turn around and scramble and try and throw it deep. You need 17 yards, even though it's not complete. Even if you would have completed the pass, the ball would have gone over to Orlando anyway. So, an interesting football game. And that's it. Lee Corso with his third professional coaching victory running across the field. Help to talk to Coach Jim Bates. Bates and the Gunslingers have now lost five in a row. And the football game ends with one point separating the Renegades and the Gunslingers. Rick Duheisel getting the congratulations and the embrace from Lee Corso. You can see Rick is very, very disappointed. Corso now can pass his long ones and a touchdown run. The final score once again, Orlando 21, San Antonio 20. USFL action continues next week with three live telecasts. Live Friday, March 17th at 8 p.m., the Baltimore Stars are here against the Orlando Renegades. The following evening, Sunday, May 18th at 8 p.m. Eastern.